Go into your first game of Dungeons & Dragons bounding with confidence with this ultimate guide to playing Dungeons & Dragons for the first time. We all felt awkward the first time we went to our first Dungeons & Dragons game. The first time I learned to play Dungeons & Dragons was at Boy Scout camp, gathered around the fire. That was awkward. We didn't only had one book, we had no dice, and we just went with it. But it was awesome. My goal here was to compile a guide to make it less awkward for you for your first time playing Dungeons & Dragons. Stay tuned to the end of the video where I have a list of things not to do on your first night. Here's what to expect the first time you play Dungeons & Dragons. Playing Dungeons & Dragons for the first time can be an exciting and immersive experience. Here's what you can generally expect. At the start of the game, you'll create your own character. This involves choosing a race, class, abilities, and background for your character. This process is usually guided by the Dungeon Master, who helps you understand the game mechanics and make choices that fit the campaign setting. The Dungeon Master may elect to give you a pre-generated character. D&D has a set of rules governing gameplay, but don't worry if you don't understand everything right away. The DM and other players are there to help you learn as you go along. The basics involve rolling dice, usually a set of polyhedral dice like a d20, a d12, d10, d8, d6, and d4. And then interpreting those results and understanding your character's abilities. D&D is a collaborative storytelling game where players and the DM work together to create and explore a fantasy world. You'll encounter challenges, puzzles, combats, encounters, and opportunities for role-playing as your characters interact with the world and other characters. This game encourages creativity and imagination. You'll often find yourself describing your character's actions, interacting with non-player characters, and solving problems using creative solutions. Dice rolls determine the outcomes of many actions in D&D, so there's an element of randomness. Sometimes your plans will succeed spectacularly, and other times they may fail miserably. Learning to adapt to these outcomes is part of the fun. D&D is a social game and often leads to the development of friendships and camaraderie among players. You'll work together to overcome challenges and achieve goals, creating memorable experiences along the way. A typical D&D session can last anywhere from a few hours to an entire day, depending on the group's preferences and schedules. This has been my experience that the average is around three hours. It's common for campaigns to span multiple sessions over weeks, months, or even years. Expect to have a lot of fun and share plenty of laughs with your fellow players. Whether it's a clever solution to a problem, a dramatic plot twist, or a hilarious moment of role-playing, D&D often leads to memorable and enjoyable experiences. What should you bring to your first game of Dungeons & Dragons? When preparing for your first Dungeons & Dragons game, it's helpful to bring a few items to ensure you have an enjoyable experience. Here's a list of things you might want to consider bringing. A player's handbook. Now, Granted, you probably don't have one, but maybe a friend of yours does, or your neighbor, or maybe a brother or sister. If you have one, it may be helpful to bring that, even though you're not gonna know it all, it'd be helpful to refer to it. The player's handbook contains all the essential rules for creating characters, understanding game mechanics, and playing the game. If you don't own one, don't worry, the Dungeon Master may have an extra copy, or it can guide you through character creation. Some D&D dice is helpful if someone has some that you can borrow, a friend of yours or someone, maybe a brother or sister has some you can borrow, but if not, that's okay. Surely someone at the table will let you borrow some. If you're really sure you're going to like it, you can find dice sets specifically designed for D&D at game stores or online. If you're an overachiever and you've already created your character, your character sheet, you can bring that with you. If not, don't worry, they'll have you one for you to fill out or you can do that one at the game. But if you have the character sheet, it'd be helpful to bring that with you. Bring a pencil or multiple pencils and an eraser for filling out your character sheet, taking notes and marking down changes during gameplay. Pens are not recommended since they're less forgiving if you need to make corrections, but I do anyway. You can scratch things out. Nobody really cares. Having a notebook or journal handy can be useful if you're jotting down important information. Keeping track of your character's backstory or goals and recording memorable moments from the game. Snacks and drinks are also helpful to bring. Depending on the length of your gaming session and the pr group's preference, you might want to bring snacks and drinks to keep you energized and hydrated throughout the game. Always hydrate. Just be mindful of any food or drink restrictions the host might have. Bring your enthusiasm. Having an open mind, a willingness to engage with the story and other players, and a sense of enthusiasm for adventure are essential for a great D&D experience. Do I have to buy anything to play D&D? For your first night playing D&D, no. You don't necessarily have to buy anything to play Dungeons & Dragons, especially for your first game. Here's why. Wizards of the Coast, the publisher of D&D, provides the basic rules for free on their website. These basic rules include everything you need to get started with the game, including character creation, gameplay mechanics, and a simplified version of the rules for combat and adventuring. You don't need to know all that before you show up, but if you wanted to, you could get that stuff for free. There are numerous online resources available for free that can help you get started with D&D. This includes character generators, there's digital dice rollers, 
And there's online communities where you can ask questions and find resources for playing the game. Later, if you really want to get to know the game, want to learn and play with others, you can buy a starter set, you can buy a player's handbook. Uh, those are all things you might want to get your own set of dice, and then more dice, and miniatures, and then more dice and minute and, and it, yeah that can get out of hand but this is one of the cheapest hobbies to ever get involved with because you really don't need to have all those things when you show up your first night many people will have those resources and anything you might need for that night so i wouldn't worry about it too much don't be intimidated if you see some people that have not just one set of dice but a lot of different dice because really dice are pretty and they make cool sounds and they're really nice and you can't get enough of them and that becomes an addiction and but that's another that's another video if you're playing D&D for the first time and you're actually going to create characters on that first night, what can you expect? When creating a character for the first time in Dungeons & Dragons, it's helpful to keep a few key points in mind to ensure a smooth and enjoyable process. First, you'll choose a race and class. Your character's race and class are two fundamental aspects that shape your abilities, strengths, and weaknesses, and role within the party. Races include humans, elves, dwarves, halflings, and more, each with their own unique traits. Classes represent their character's profession or adventuring style, such as fighter, wizard, rogue, cleric, etc. Consider the type of character you want to play and choose a race and class that align with your preferences. Your DM and the group can help you. Ability scores. D&D characters have six ability scores. Strength, Dexterity, Constitution, Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma. These scores determine your character's physical and mental attributes. Ability scores are usually generated by rolling dice or using a point buy system as determined by your DM. Allocate your ability scores wisely, keep in mind your chosen class and role within the party. Your background. Your character's background provides context for their life before becoming an adventurer. Backgrounds offer skill proficiencies, tool proficiencies, and role playing hooks that help flesh out your character's personality and backstory. Consider how your character's background influences their motivations, goals, and relationships with other characters. Alignment and Personality Alignment represents your character's moral and ethical outlook, ranging from lawful good to chaotic evil. While alignment is optional and can be fluid, it can help guide your character's decision-making and role-playing. Develop a personality and backstory for your character that includes their beliefs, quirks, flaws, and motivations. Your Equipment and Gear Choose your starting equipment based on your character's class and background. Starting gear typically includes weapons, armor, tools, and other adventuring gear. Your DM may provide starting equipment options or gold pieces that you can use to purchase gear during character creation. Your name and appearance. Give your character a name that reflects their personality, background, and the world they inhabit. Consider their physical appearance, including features, clothing, and any distinguishing marks or accessories. Collaborate with the dungeon master and other players as you create your character to ensure that your character fits well within the party in the campaign setting. Discuss character concepts, backstories, and group dynamics to create a cohesive and enjoyable gaming experience. Remember that character creation is an opportunity to bring your imagination to life and to create a character that you'll enjoy playing throughout your D&D adventures. Don't be afraid to get creative, ask questions, and collaborate with your fellow players to create memorable characters and stories. What should I expect gameplay to be like when playing my first game of Dungeons & Dragons? Playing Dungeons & Dragons for the first time can be an exciting and immersive experience. Here's what you can generally expect during gameplay. The dungeon master will set the scene, describing the world, the current situation, your character's surroundings. They might introduce a quest, a problem to solve, or an encounter to navigate. As your characters explore the world and interact with NPCs, you'll have opportunities for role playing. This involves speaking and acting as your character, making decisions, and engaging in conversations with other characters. Don't be afraid to get into character and express yourself. Your characters will explore various locations such as towns, dungeons, forests, and caves. During exploration, the DM describes what your characters see, hear, smell, and feel, allowing you to imagine the world around you and make decisions based on that information. From time to time, you'll engage in combat. Combat in D&D occurs when your characters engage in battle with monsters, enemies, or other threats. From time to time, there'll be skill checks and challenges. Throughout the game, your characters will face challenges that require skill checks to overcome. These checks involve rolling dice and adding modifiers based on your character's abilities and skills. Common types of skill checks include stealth checks, perception checks, and persuasion checks. And my favorite, intimidation. There's a lot of problem solving in D&D. Often it involves solving puzzles, deciphering clues, and overcoming obstacles through creative thinking and teamwork. Your characters might need to find a way past a locked door, negotiate with a hostile NPC, or unravel a mystery to progress in the story. Progression rewards. As your characters complete quests, defeat enemies, and overcome challenges, 
they'll earn experience points and possibly treasure, magical items, or other rewards. XP allows your character to level up and become more powerful, getting new abilities and improving their skills. What should you expect combat to be like on your first time playing Dungeons and Dragons? Combat in Dungeons and Dragons is a structured and dynamic part of gameplay where characters engage in battles with monsters, enemies, or other threats. Here's what combat typically entails when playing D&D for the first time. First, there's initiative. Combat begins with determining initiative, which determines the order in which characters and creatures take their turns. Each participant rolls a d20 and adds their initiative modifier, usually based on their dexterity score. The DM then organizes the initiative order from highest to lowest. During combat, each participant takes turns in initiative order. On your turn, you have a variety of actions you can take, including attacking, casting spells, moving, using items, or performing other actions based on your character's abilities. In combat, characters have different actions that they can take on their turn. The most common actions include attack. You can make a melee or ranged attack against a target within your reach or range. Cast a spell. If your character is a spellcaster, you can cast spells using spell slots and following the rules of spellcasting. Or you can move. You can move a certain distance determined by your character's speed. Or you can use an item. Make a potion. Use a magic item. Dodge, dash, or disengage. You can take defensive actions like dodging to increase your armor class, dashing to move twice your normal speed, or disengaging to avoid opportunity attacks when moving away from enemies. Then comes the attack rolls and damage. When you make an attack, you roll a 20-sided dice and add your attack modifier, usually based on your strength or dexterity score and proficiency bonus. If your roll meets or exceeds the target's AC, you hit and roll damage for your weapon or spell. Damage is determined by the weapon or spell's damage dice plus any modifiers. Damage and hit points. When you take damage from an attack or spell, it subtracts from your character's hit points. If your hit points drop to zero or below, your character falls unconscious and may die if they fail death saving throws. The goal in combat is usually to reduce your enemy's hit points to zero while preserving your own. There's also tactical movement. Combat often involves a strategic movement and positioning to gain advantages over enemies and protect yourself from harm. You can move around the battlefield to flank enemies, take cover, or reach advantageous positions for attacking or casting spells. Combat may involve status conditions and effects that affect characters and creatures, such as being paralyzed, poisoned, or frightened. These conditions impose penalties or restrictions on affected creatures' actions and abilities. Ending the combat. Combat ends when all enemies are defeated, one side surrenders, or the DM decides that the threat has been neutralized. After combat, characters may heal wounds, recover resources, and explore the aftermath of the battle, as in loot the bodies. Combat in D&D can be a fast-paced and exciting offering opportunities for strategic thinking, teamwork, and thrilling moments of triumph and danger. As you gain experience with the game, you become more familiar with the rules and tactics involved in combat encounters. So how do you win at this D&D game? In Dungeons and Dragons, winning isn't typically defined in the same way as it might be in traditional games. D&D is more about collaborative storytelling, problem solving, and exploration rather than achieving a specific victory condition. Here is what defines maybe winning at D&D. Completing quests or objectives. The primary goal in many D&D campaigns is to complete quests or achieve specific objectives set forth by the Dungeon Master. These quests can involve anything from rescuing a kidnapped NPC to retrieving a powerful artifact to defeating a tyrannical villain. Winning in this sense means successfully completing the tasks set before your characters by the DM. Surviving and advancing. Winning in D&D can also mean surviving the challenges thrown at your characters and advancing through the story. Overcoming obstacles, defeating monsters, and navigating treacherous situations are all part of the journey. As your characters gain experience points, level up, and acquire new abilities, they become more capable of facing greater challenges, which can be seen as a form of progression and success. Creating memorable stories and experiences. Ultimately, winning in D&D often comes down to creating memorable stories and experiences with your fellow players. Whether it's a dramatic showdown with a powerful villain, a clever solution to a puzzle, or a hilarious moment of role-playing, the goal is to have fun, engage with the story, and share in the collective experience of adventure and camaraderie. Also fulfilling character goals and arcs. Each player's character in D&D typically has their own goals, motivations, and personal arcs. Winning can involve advancing your character's story, achieving their personal goals, or experiencing meaningful character development over the course of the campaign. This might include things like seeking revenge on a sworn enemy, uncovering secrets from your character's past, or forging lasting bonds with other characters in the party. Enjoying the journey. 
Ultimately, winning in D&D is about enjoying the journey and the process of playing the game. It's not about achieving a specific endpoint or defeating your every enemy that you encounter. Instead, it's about immersing yourself in a rich fantasy world, engaging with other fellow players, and experiencing the thrill of adventure together. When you try something new, the last thing you want to do is embarrass yourself. So here are some things when playing D&D for the first time that you won't, don't want to do. Don't be afraid to ask questions. It's natural to have questions, especially when you're new to the game. Don't hesitate to ask the dungeon master or more experienced players for clarifications or rule, on rules, mechanics, or anything else you're unsure about. D&D is a complex game, and everyone was a beginner at some point. Don't hog the spotlight. D&D is a collaborative game, and it's essential to give everyone a chance to participate and shine. Avoid monopolizing the conversation or taking excessively long turns during combat. Make sure to listen to others, engage with their ideas, and support your fellow players. Don't minimize other players' contributions. Each player brings something valuable to the table, whether it's strategic thinking, creative problem solving, or engaging role playing. Avoid dismissing or belittling other players' ideas or decisions. Instead, encourage collaboration and celebrate each other's successes. Don't ignore role playing opportunities. Role playing is a significant aspect of D&D and allows you to immerse yourself in your character and the game world. Don't shy away from role playing opportunities or let fear of embarrassment hold you back. Embrace the chance to embody your character, express their personality, and interact with NPCs and other players. Don't get discouraged by mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes, especially when learning something new. Don't let setbacks or failures discourage you. Instead, view them as learning opportunities and opportunities for character growth. D&D is a game of storytelling and improvisation, and sometimes the most memorable moments come from unexpected twists and turns. Don't disrupt the game flow. It's essential to respect the flow of the game and avoid behaviors that disrupt the immersion or enjoyment of others. This includes side conversations, distractions, or disruptive behavior that detracts from the game's atmosphere. Stay engaged, focus on the game, and be mindful of your fellow players' experiences. Don't assume your character knows everything. While your character might have certain skills or abilities, they don't automatically know everything about the game world or the DM's plans. Avoid metagaming, and this is using out-of-character knowledge to influence in-game decisions. And allow your character to discover and learn things organically within the game. Don't expect perfection. D&D is a game of improvisation and creativity, and things don't always go according to plan. Embrace the unpredictability of the game and be flexible in your approach. For more player tips, check out this video right here. And to find people to play with, check out this video right here. And with that, class dismissed.